Thank you, Sarah. Um, as she said, my name is April Allen, and I do have the honor and privilege of serving as the chair of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. Um, I'm also the director of government relations for Continental Tire. Continental is proud to call South Carolina home. Here we employ more than 2,000 people and have invested more than $675 million since 2009. Like the thousands of other manufacturers throughout our state, our decision to work and live in South Carolina is because this state is, right, is the right mix of skilled people and a business environment that is right for manufacturers. And, <clears throat> and that is why the study we are de debuting today reinforces South Carolina's manufacturing industry matters. Its impact is tremendous and its future is bright. On behalf of the state's manufacturing community, I am proud to say that the value and promise of American manufacturing is alive and well in South Carolina. Our mission to, is to continue to make South Carolina's manufacturers sure that South Carolina's manufacturers are successful every day, today and into the future. Governor, thank you for joining us here today um, and for recognizing the impact of manufacturing on our state. Governor McMaster. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with these leaders, and as has been <clears throat> said, South Carolina is on a roll, and I can't wait to hear the explanation of these numbers. I know they will be off the chart. Uh, we are a business-friendly state. As you know, our manufacturers are the, are the heart and core of what we do. Not only have they branded our state as the best place in the world to live, work, and do business and invest hundreds and millions of dollars, but what they bring in, in terms of other businesses that work with and support them is enormous to our economy, makes our people strong. Uh, there are a lot of reasons that we're successful. Uh, one reason, we're a white right to work state. We're getting ready to pass a very, very good safe harbor bill to protect businesses. And also, we never close. That is one thing that has distinguished the way we have approached the pandemic here in South Carolina from other states. In other states, they close manufacturing plants. They close churches. They close businesses. And many of them are still closed. And that's not the way we did it here. We took a better approach. We took a smart approach. And it has worked. And so we are positioned now. We have a unique opportunity. Right now, there's a, a confluence of opportunities that have come our way. That while other states and other places are trying to dig out, we're in a position to blast off. We slowed down, but we didn't close. And with the academic strength, with the manufacturing strength, the business strength we have, we have an opportunity now, today, this year, to take enormous steps forward and put us 10 years ahead of the competition. The competition in the Southeast is fierce. This is where the competition is the most fierce. And for us to prosper, for our people to prosper and be happy and safe and secure, we must take action, including these things. We must have full four-day kindergarten for every low-income child in South Carolina. There's no escaping it. Education is the key. Education and the training, we must have it. Number two, we must make college more affordable and accessible by needs-based scholarships and tuition grants. Also, Included in the steps that we must take are those, again, involving income taxes. And many of us have been calling on income tax cuts for years. We're the highest in the Southeast. That puts us at a competitive disadvantage. Number four, we must invest in infrastructure today. Why? Because we have a lifetime opportunity based on surplus revenues that will be referred to today, as well as the money from the Savannah River settlement as well as the COVID-related money funds that are coming from Washington. This puts us in a rare opportunity in a state where we are not digging out, but we are blasting off. We can build on what we've done, and we must do so, and we must understand that's what we need to do. We have to widen our interstates. We have to pay cash for the port. We have to build water and sewer in the rural areas, develop that infrastructure. And we must address the deferred, deferred maintenance needs in state buildings around the state. So my message is that manufacturing is the pride and joy of South Carolina. It has made an enormous difference over the years. 
and will continue to do so in all that it, all that it means. It is one part of our great economy, but if we use our heads now and we take this once in a lifetime opportunity, we will certainly have done our job for future generations. And I believe the best is yet to come. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for being here today. My name is Joey Von Nessen. I'm a research economist with the Darla Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina. And we are very excited to be here today to debut this study documenting the economic impact and the footprint that manufacturing has on the state of South Carolina. As many of you know, manufacturing has been one of South Carolina's primary economic drivers and engines for many years. So manufacturing's contribution is certainly nothing new. Uh, but despite this economic footprint that many of us are generally aware of, manufacturing's contribution is nevertheless often underreported, often understated in South Carolina, sometimes by as much as 20 percent. And this is in part because over the past two decades, we've seen manufacturing transform into a globally competitive export-oriented industry cluster that permeates many sectors of the state's economy in ways that are not always explicitly captured. So our purpose in this study that we are rolling out this morning uh, is to first complete a comprehensive assessment of manufacturing on South Carolina, and second, also to address the ongoing evolution of the manufacturing workforce demands in South Carolina in the face of rapid technological innovation. South Carolina's economic growth has been driven by manufacturing over the past decade, but that certainly does not guarantee by itself that manufacturing, that those trends in manufacturing will necessarily continue going forward. We still maintain a strong competitive advantage in South Carolina, uh, but the state has to be very proactive in keeping pace with the evolving trends that we are seeing in the industry and in the broader global marketplace as we move forward to stay on top in the, in the 2020s. Manufacturing has the potential to continue to benefit South Carolinians, and the bottom line is that it has the potential to continue to provide numerous jobs that are high-wage, high-skilled positions for South Carolinians, giving them more opportunities, and that's the real value that manufacturing provides to the state. So what can we observe about manufacturing's contribution to South Carolina's economy? There are several ways that we can see this very clearly. First of all, we can see it by examining simple growth rates. If we look at advanced manufacturing, which we define as the aerospace, the automotive, and the tire sectors, the advanced manufacturing sector, it's been growing consistently at about three times the rate of South Carolina overall over the past decade, going back to 2010. About 7.8% on average per year, compared to about 2.5% on average per year for the state of South Carolina. Secondly, we see manufacturing experience more job growth in South Carolina than in any other southeastern state over the past decade. South Carolina had the highest cumulative growth rate for both advanced manufacturing, the subset, uh, the, the subset of manufacturing known as advanced manufacturing, as well as for the manufacturing sector as a whole. So regardless of how we define it, we still see South Carolina ranked as number one compared to all other southeastern states. Manufacturing also generates a sizable volume of high-skilled, high-wage positions, as we mentioned. And this has been easily observed in that since 2002, the wage premium offered by manufacturing jobs in South Carolina has more than doubled, uh, again, over the past uh, essentially 20 years, two decades, since 2002. For the U.S. as a whole, uh, this premium has not changed. And in South Carolina, manufacturing currently offers a wage premium of about 33% over the average job. That is to say, the average manufacturing job in South Carolina pays about 33% more than the average job for South Carolina as a whole. In terms of manufacturing's total economic footprint in South Carolina, I mentioned that it is often underreported uh, and sometimes significantly so. And so the question emerges as to why. Why would that be the case? Well, the answer is actually fairly simple. Workers in manufacturing occupations can also be employed in non-manufacturing industries. And so if we look at the manufacturing occupations and look at those workers, sometimes they're not always employed for manufacturing firms directly, and therefore we don't always explicitly capture those. So two quick examples of how that might work. First of all, we've seen manufacturers in recent years rely more on staffing firms uh, to help them identify and recruit qualified workers. Uh, this is an advantage because it allows manufacturers to more easily adjust the size of their workforce uh, as needed to accommodate the regular changes in market demand. But because these staffing firms are placing the workers 
the workers on paper are not employed in the manufacturing industry for the manufacturing companies by traditional definitions. And so they typically aren't counted. So that's something that we wanted to make sure that we included in, in, this, in this study. Secondly, uh, there's also a demand for manufacturing workers simply outside of the industry. The construction industry is one example uh, of a major sector that also employs workers that uh, are in manufacturing occupations that actually employ and need these skills. So when we account for these omissions and look at it comprehensively, we find that manufacturing in South Carolina, the current annual economic impact for the state, is approximately $206 billion annually. And this represents about 703,000 jobs, about 703,000 jobs when accounting for both the direct effects as well as all of the economic multiplier effects, these secondary economic effects that result from all of the suppliers that manufacturers work with, as well as all, the, all of the local businesses that are supported by the employees when they go out and they spend their wages in the local economy on a variety of different industry sectors. All of those local businesses see an uptick in demand and we see additional jobs created in those sectors as well. And when we contextualize these numbers and, and put this in context with the state's economy as a, as a whole, all told, we find that manufacturing basically supports about 30% of South Carolina's employment base, making it clearly one of the state's largest industry sectors. We also see that manufacturing contains some of the state's highest employment multiplier effects. The multiplier effect being a way that we can measure how employment in manufacturing scales up total employment in the state. Specifically, the manufacturing employment multiplier in South Carolina is 2.4, meaning that for every 10 jobs that we see created by manufacturers in South Carolina, another 14 are created elsewhere in, in the state. So manufacturing has an ability to scale up employment when manufacturers expand, when existing manufacturers expand their activity, or when new manufacturers come to the state, we see additional job creation as a result of that. This employment multiplier is also higher than the average for South Carolina, the average being about 1.6. And in certain subsectors of manufacturing, we see the employment multiplier significantly higher, closer to between three and a half and four. So manufacturing really does have an ability to scale up employment in South Carolina in fairly unique ways. And then finally, this impact also generates significant tax revenue each year for the state's general fund. Uh, we find in this study that about 38% of the total size of the general fund or of, or of the total general fund uh, is contributed either directly or indirectly through uh, manufacturing activity. And that's because half of the general fund approximately uh, arises from individual income taxes. Uh, that's where the general fund revenue is, is sourced. That's where it, it comes from. So when we see a large volume of high wage positions in South Carolina that are supported by manufacturing, those workers are earning wages and they are paying taxes that is contributing to, to the general fund. Looking ahead, the manufacturing industry is continuing to evolve, and as I mentioned before, South Carolina certainly can't rest on its laurels. South Carolina must evolve in order to remain competitive, must evolve with the manufacturing industry more broadly. And this leads us to the second element of the study, where we wanted to look more specifically at the changes in the demands for workforce, uh, for the manufacturing workforce in South Carolina. And if we, look at, if we look at South Carolina's competitive advantages, two of the, the biggest competitive advantages that South Carolina offers today uh, is uh, number one, infrastructure, and number two, workforce development initiatives. So infrastructure being everything from the South Carolina port to all of our, our interstate and rail railways and, and our infrastructure as a whole, and that puts South Carolina in a very good position to be able to manufacture goods in this state and then distribute them either to a global market or to a domestic market. South Carolina is very well suited to do both of those, uh, which is why we are so, which is why infrastructure is such a strong competitive advantage for our state. The other, of course, being workforce development and all of the great work that the South Carolina Technical College System does in order to match workers in South Carolina with the needs of the employers that they have and the manufacturing employers specifically. And so that's why it's important to stay on top of workforce development initiatives because this is such a key and important competitive advantage that South Carolina currently offers. But rapid technological development is causing rapid increases in demand for a high-skilled, experienced workforce. And we looked at this specifically in the study and examined the differences between manufacturing occupations as a whole 
and the manufacturing occupations that are likely to be in highest demand over the next decade. We look specifically at 127 manufacturing occupations uh, that currently exist in South Carolina and look to identify the characteristics of those in highest demand over the next decade, which ones of those will be in highest demand and what are the unique characteristics about them. And what we find is that while just 10% of all manufacturing occupations currently represent high-tech fields, nearly 50% of high-demand occupation, uh, high-demand manufacturing occupations do. And we also see that the occupations in highest demand require significantly more experience and education than the average manufacturing job. So while the economic landscape is shifting, uh, the bottom line for South Carolinians is that manufacturing uh, is that in manufacturing, we clearly see how skills training directly translates into higher wage jobs. And so it's very important uh, that we stay on top of that going forward. And evolving with the industry to maintain our competitive strengths and to continue to provide opportunities for South Carolinians in the 2020s is critically important as we move ahead uh, in a post-pandemic economy. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Doc. Good morning, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here to talk about manufacturing in the state of South Carolina, something we are extremely proud of. Um, Dr. Von Nessen, thank you for this outstanding study. There's an old trick in trying a case that if you've got an outstanding expert, you put him on and then follow that outstanding expert by your weakest witness. That way the expert <laughs> looks better. So um, I don't think having me up here as the weakest witness can make Dr. Von Nessen look any better or the statistics he just told you um, make us any prouder in South Carolina um, than where we are now. I'm proud to be standing here with Governor McMaster, South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance, um, Sarah Hazard, April, John, those folks do a tremendous, um, tremendous um, job every day in communicating with the House. Um, with um, Senator Massey and myself about legislation that is important for manufacturers in this state. Um, they have become an extremely valuable partner in what we do, and we appreciate them. Um, Dr. Van Nessen, we knew that manufacturing was good in South Carolina. We knew it was outstanding. Sometimes it takes something like this to tell you how good it is and where it is, and I can tell you 30% of the jobs connected um, to manufacturing in this state is just outstanding. A $200 billion annual impact is just outstanding. 7% growth is just outstanding. But I want to go back and touch on something that the governor said earlier about manufacturing and not shutting manufacturing down and how important that has been during the pandemic. because. Um, the governor made those tremendously wide, wise decisions. Um, it's pretty clear that South Carolina is going to come back much quicker than other states. I talked to Dr. Van Nessen, and he said, hopefully, probably by the end of the year, which is outstanding and far, far, far ahead of the other states that we deal with. Um, I want to give a shout out to, to Senator Massey and the Senate. You know, to be a pro-business state, to be a pro-manufacturing state, you have to work together. I called him at 9.30 last night. There's a particular bill that um, the manufacturers are interested in, we're interested in. They've taken the bold step of passing the bill. And so as I was doing my walk last night, I called Senator Massey and I said, what about this? What about this? What about this? It takes that constant and continuous communication between the two bodies with the assistance of the Manufacturers Alliance to get this legislation correct and continue to move manufacturing in the right direction. I can tell you as we grappled with workforce last year, manufacturing is going to change in this state and we have to be ready to change with it. I think we not only have the want to, to change with it, but there's no option other than to change as manufacturing continues to change over the next 10 years. We want to be at 30 percent. We want to continue to be at 30 percent. We want to go higher than 30 percent, but we can't sit back and we can't rest on our laurels. I know many of you might say that the manufacturing, um, um, that the manufacturing um, impetus that we've had um, over the last two or three years, that's just happening everywhere in the southeast. And I know it's easy to say that, but it's not. 
It's happening to an extent, but it's happening to a major extent in South Carolina. And I think we can compare North Carolina, Georgia to South Carolina and clearly tell that South Carolina is the lead horse in that pack. We want to continue to be the lead horse in the Southeast as manufacturing jobs continue to flock to our great state. And I'll conclude with that. There's not a lot you can say after Dr. Von Nesson's report, but I'm delighted to be here in support of manufacturing. I'm delighted to be here in support of the SCMA. And I'm, I'm thrilled that we were able to finally quantify what we already knew about South Carolina, that manufacturing is hot. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Governor McMaster, Dr. Von Nessen, and everyone for joining us today. As you've all heard this morning, the impact of manufacturing in South Carolina is significant for our state. South Carolina has been intentional in growing our existing industries, attracting new investments, and cultivating a skilled workforce. Our state has fostered a pro-business climate where manufacturers can thrive. We are excited for the manufacturing industry's accomplishments and want to build on this tremendous momentum because we know that what South Carolina makes, makes South Carolina. Thanks everyone, have a great day. We're happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that question. Uh, I, you know, obviously, I don't have a crystal ball here. It's scheduled for um, um, committee, I believe, today. I think there's a, a good chance that the South, that the House, will pass COVID liability this year. And as a matter of fact, I was talking to Senator Massey about that night, that last night. So, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions? Can you talk about the Just about, I'm sorry, can you, you repeat the question? That manufacturing will need to kind of evolve um, in, in coming years. What does that look like exactly? Well, from a workforce standpoint, it basically means that we're seeing more requirements for, uh, for workers in terms of post-secondary education and more experience. The, the, the manufacturing occupations in highest demand very clearly show <clears throat> a deviation from the, the broader sector as a whole in terms of that spe those specific types of, of training initiatives that will be needed. I think more broadly, as we look ahead over the next decade, um, there are several, uh, several changes that are coming. We don't know exactly what they'll look like. I think one prominent one that, that we hear talked about a lot is the transition towards electric vehicles and what that implies for the supply chain changes for manufacturing um, in the U.S. as a whole and in manufacturing in, in South Carolina specifically. Uh, that involves not only supply chain issues, but also uh, issues related to energy costs, which are going to be more and more relevant for uh, automobile production in, in particular. So those are the types of changes that, that we see coming that we have to really stay on, on top of because they're, gonna, they're going to come very quickly and, uh, and, and the, the market moves very, very fast and that's why these workforce initiatives are so important. So, yeah, so great question. We are not back to pre-pandemic levels yet. Uh, manufacturing is ahead of most industry sectors on that front. And South Carolina looks like it, it, it is increasingly likely that South Carolina will recover most, if not all, jobs by later in, in 2021. So we're down about 2% currently overall for South Carolina in terms of employment levels compared to where we were in February of 2020. But manufacturing has been more resilient overall. Uh, but it has also been affected recently by, uh, by these supply chain constraints, with, uh, with the semiconductors being the most recent example of that. Um, so we've seen manufacturers in South Carolina have to do short, short periodic shutdowns uh, because of those, uh, those supply constraints. Um, that's likely to continue into the summer months, so those, those supply chain concerns will, will continue to limit somewhat what, what, uh, the recovery of manufacturing. But overall, it's been very resilient. and when we compare ma manufacturing to other industry sectors, it's, it's been more resilient and is uh, one of the, the faster growing industries in the state still in 2021. With President Biden pushing his infrastructure bill, what, what would you be hoping to see come out of that as far as it relates to benefiting South Carolinians and the manufacturing sector? 
Well, I think with, with infrastructure, it's, it, there are a number of, of areas where South Carolina can benefit. Um, we are looking, as we mentioned before, we look at, at the, the primary competitive advantages that South Carolina offers. So if we look at our, our rail system and our highway system, our, our port system, all our, our strong and, and our, our competitive advantages that South Carolina maintains. I think if we look at this specific bill, uh, one of the areas that South Carolina needs to, to focus on is uh, broadband access. That's going to be increasingly important. So to the extent that South Carolina can, uh, can access funds for, for that initiative, I think that's going to be critical going forward. So I'd say that's a, a pressing priority for South Carolina right now, certainly. Any Thank other questions? You Thank you very much. Thanks, Joyce. Good job. Oh, well. I guess I'm like, hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>